Instantly Dated is brought to you by Diabolic DVD, specializing in demented discs from around the world. From cult favorites to art house, grind house, and everything in between, go to DiabolicDVD.com. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm McHugh. Hey, do me a favor real quick. Click that subscribe button in your podcast app or on YouTube right now. Ah, that's much better. Thank you. Hey, back in the 80s, I really got into Laserdisc because it was the only way that I knew that I could find widescreen versions of movies. Because back then, it was all pan and scan VHS, and the only way to see a movie in its original aspect ratio was Laserdiscs. I even remember doing a speech in junior high where I showed an example of how all the people on the screen were missing when the shot was cropped. Director Sidney Pollack has a very simple explanation as to why a director wouldn't want their movie panned and scanned. It's just that if a director chooses to tell a story for for whatever reasons in this ratio, because they want all this information in, It's not fair for somebody else to tell you with our name on it that this is what we shot. I didn't shoot that. So it's all about the aspect ratio. Our old TVs were 4x3, new TVs are 16x9, but that still isn't the same aspect ratio as film. So even these days, we still can't completely get rid of those black bars at the bottom and top of the screen. That's because films which put a value of 1 to the video image's height are typically 2.35 to 1 or 2.4 to 1. But our HD TVs are 16 by 9. The first movie that I ever saw on VHS widescreen was Woody Allen's Manhattan, a cinematic masterpiece. They didn't even use black bars on the bottom and the top. Instead, if I remember correctly, it was actually gray bars. I guess they thought that would be the least intrusive color to use. It wasn't until DVDs and widescreen TVs came out that distributors finally stopped hacking off almost half the screen of motion pictures. But let's look at it from the VHS distributor's perspective. In a segment highlighting Steven Spielberg's unanswered wish to have Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade letterbox for its VHS release in 1990, Gene Siskel makes the case for all that panning and scanning. Because if you remember, back in the day, everyone didn't have a 50-inch screen. If you have a bigger size TV set, I know when people see it at home, if they're seeing it on a set that's 25 inches, let's say, or bigger, then you can handle the letterbox. People have problems with the the banding on the top and bottom when they're looking at a small set. It's been said that the first use of letterboxing in consumer video started with the RCA Capacitance Electronic Disc, or CED. At first, the letterboxing was just used for opening and closing credits. But then, they started doing it for the whole film. The first fully letterboxed CED release is said to have been the Fellini film Armacord in 1984. So nowadays, we have the opposite problem. People have to convert 4x3 TV shows like Star Trek The Next Generation to 16x9. So what do you think they do? You guessed it. Pan and scan. Take a look at all these pans going on in this episode of STTNG. So what do you guys think of all this panning and scanning of new content? Or are you just fine with a 4x3 square image on your HDTV? I know I am. Let me know in the comments section. Alright guys, we'll see you next time on Instantly Dated. Well, if you're watching this show, you love stuff like B-movies, and nobody serves that up better than Diabolic DVD. These guys are fans and collectors just like you and me. So go to DiabolicDVD.com right now. You'll be amazed by what they have to offer. Over 50 great new games. You'll have the time of your life at Showbiz Pizza Place. You've never seen a place like Showbiz. That's it.